Welcome to the Education Finance Conference Committee. We have a quorum, so we'll start um, getting going. Sorry, thank you for the um, room change, and then also uh, for being a little bit late. We just got done with Ways and Means. Um, members, today we have three articles in front of us. Article 6, Article 9, and Article 1. What we'll do is we'll walk through each article, the um, sections in each article that we'll be looking at to see if people have questions. And when we hit a section that has an amendment, we'll adopt that amendment and then move on to the next section. And then we'll adopt the article at the end. Um, with that, members, I think what we'll do first is pitch it over to nonpartisan non staff to walk through Article 6 charter schools. Madam Chair, members, in your packets are three things. There's the single page landscape style map of the uh, sections in front of you proposed for adoption. Uh, that's organized in the same manner as the side-by-side uh, -side bill summary with the article and section number followed by the title of the House uh, section, uh, the comparison column, the Senate section number, uh, the Senate title of the or header for that that section or subdivision and then finally in the far right column the proposed for adoption uh, that uh, is the wishes of this committee as to which provisions to adopt there are no amendments listed for article 6 madam chair uh, so that's what you've got in front of you for article 6 thank you members are there any questions on article 6 Seeing none, I believe the motion is to adopt sections one through three. You know, adopt sections. Um, yep, got it. Adopt sections one through three, which is the entire article for Article Six, and uh, with the note that the revisers instructed to make technical corrections as necessary. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Article Six is adopted. Next up, we have Article 9. Madam Chair, members, Article 9 has an amendment included. So in addition to the map of the sections that are listed, uh, uh, there should be in your packets an amendment uh, labeled uh, SCH 5237A31. And when uh, you get to Section 2 on the Senate side, that's where this amendment will apply. Again, the map is organized in the same manner as the map for Article 6. Members, are there any questions or comments? No? Nope. I think we'll go to, did you want to move oh. Amendment 31? Excuse me. So, yep, let's begin by amending. Um, all what? those in favor of amendment? What do you want to talk about, A31? Okay. I'm looking for it here in my pocket, or in my packet. There we are. The A31 is the uh, school state, the state school librarian, and um, we are tasking the Department of Education to retain $130,000 uh, for that library, under uh, appropriated from library uh, aid under this section for the cost of our state school librarian under um, the A31. Any questions or comments on this? Hearing none, no questions or comments. All those in favor say uh, uh, adopting A31 say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The A31 is adopted. Um, Mr. Strom, can you walk through, I figured that one, we'd we kind of jumped the gun on that, but can we walk through each of the articles really briefly? Uh, certainly, Madam Section, Chair. Sorry. Uh, 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 Section 1 uh, of the House and the Senate are the same. This is the provision that allows the furniture purchase out of the school food service fund if the uh, district is running an appropriate surplus in its food account. Uh, section 2 is related to the school, uh, state school librarian. Um, with the amendment that's in front of you, this funds the, the uh, provision of the state school librarian starting in fiscal year 26 out of the appropriation for the libraries. You'll see when we get to section uh, 11 with the state agency, the funding for uh, fiscal year 25 will be in the, the state agency art, uh, article for that here. 
Uh, Madam Chair, the next three sections have to do with uh, technical change to the way the school nutrition programs are paid. They continue to be paid to the recipients at 100% in the current year. Uh, perhaps the Senate would uh, prefer to describe the remaining provisions of this article. Ms. Hood, I would like to describe the remaining provisions. <clears throat> Madam, Madam Chair, members, um, the row marked <clears throat> Senate Section 3. Uh, would require the commissioner to make a report to the legislature annually on how school districts and charter schools use their school library aid. Uh, the next row, marked Senate Section 4, uh, is uh, an appropriation to the uh, modification of the fiscal year 2025 school lunch appropriation. This provision was uh, identical in, in each body except uh, for the effective date. Uh, it's the same story about the next row, marked Senate Section 5, school breakfast aid. And both of these uh, food aid programs need to be uh, increased for the additional VPK seats authorized elsewhere in this bill. Finally, Madam Chair, the row marked Senate Section 6 is a reviser instruction directing the reviser to recodify the existing school library aid program out of Chapter 134 and into Chapter 124D. Thank you. Um, with that, members, any questions on Article 9 or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting Article 9 as amended and allowing the and, um, indicated on the track sheet documents, allowing fiscal staff to is instructed to adjust the appropriations and revisers instructed to make technical corrections as necessary. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. Uh, Article 9 is adopted. <laughs> With that, um, members, we are going to walk through Article 1. A little bit slower. We have a few more amendments with that. So with that, um, we will start with nonpartisan uh, staff. Madam Chair, these are primarily Senate provisions, so perhaps Mr. Aronson would like to start. <clears throat> Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Aronson. <clears throat> Madam Chair and members, um, the document is two-sided. At the top, it's marked Article 1, General Education Sections Proposed for Adoption. The first row uh, marked Senate Section 1 <clears throat> uh, is... Uh, is a technical change to prune out some other references to kindergarten pupils with a disability. Uh, this was uh, similar in each of the House and the Senate. Uh, the effective date was different and the staff recommendation was to adopt the Senate um, section. The next row, <clears throat> ALC aid, ALC transportation aid, excuse me. Um, this was very similar in, in each body. Um, the Senate uh, uh, the staff recommendation is to adopt uh, the Senate uh, langu uh, language. Uh, the next row, school English learner revenue. Members may recall that um, both the House and Senate uh, proposed similar language that would have um, separated the calculation of the English learner cross subsidy aid uh, from the existing school district EL revenue calculation. Um, the staff recommendation is to adopt the, the Senate approach to this, which is to uh, codify the English Learner Cross Subsidy Aid into its own subdivision. There is an amendment that I believe is available to members <clears throat> marked A26. Uh, this, A26. Um, when the Senate originally drafted this proposal, we neglected to include a technical uh, conforming change to the definition of basic skills revenue, which would be necessary uh, if this cross-subsidy aid was, was to be codified in its own subdivision. So the A26 essentially just uh, adds the new subdivision 5A uh, to the definition of basic skills revenue. And relative to current law, uh, this, this A26 doesn't, doesn't change anything. Members, are there any, is there any questions on Amendment A26? And thank you, Mr. Anderson, for the um, explanation of the amendment. Uh, Representative Krisha. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Mr. Shaw, can you confirm what they said? 
Mr. Strom. Madam Chair, Representative Krusha, yes. <laughs> Trust but dramified. <laughs> dramified, I like that. That is a totally new phrase we're absolutely going to use. Um, with that, members, are there any questions on Amendment 26? Any other questions? Sorry. Seeing none, um, I move to adopt Amendment 26. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Amendment A26 is adopted. Um, go ahead and continue the walkthrough. Madam Chair, in the, in the row immediately below that, marked Senate Section 4, there's, a, there's another uh, technical edit indicated in the far right-hand column. Um, upon review, staff uh, and, and advice from MMB, staff thought it would be uh, important to indicate that in the new subdivision for cross-subsidy aid, uh, the reference to English learner revenue should be clarified to mean the English learner revenue under subdivision five. This perhaps is the sort of thing that falls within the um, technical authority that the chairs have been directing um, staff with, but, but I want to call that out for, for members' attention. Madam Chair, I don't know if you want to. See if there's any questions. <laughs> um, members, are there any questions on this uh, technical provision? Okay, then we'll move on. Okay. Madam Chair, the next row is marked House Section 4, Senate Section 5. This is the UI uh, aid program. The staff recommendation is to adopt the Senate language. The next row is marked House Section 5, Senate Section 6, Learning Year Pupil Units. This is similar to the earlier provision, uh, just pruning out some additional um, unnecessary references to kindergarten pupils with a disability. The next row, uh, the local optional equalization row. Uh, this, members will recall, this is the row that, this is the provision that uh, increases the strength of the local optional uh, levy equalization to offset uh, additional market value levies attributable to the voluntary pre-kindergarten pupils authorized later in the bill. The provisions were, um, were very similar, except for a uh, different effective date, and the staff recommendation is to adopt the Senate language here. The next row is uh, the compensatory education revenue modifications. Um, both the House and Senate bills uh, sought to accomplish uh, very similar ends, which is to um, uh, do some technical cleanup in that subdivision and to uh, extend the, the pilot grant amounts uh, beyond fiscal year 2025. And the staff recommendation is to adopt the Senate language. The next row. Uh, Marked Senate Section 9. There's no comparable provision in the House, but what this what this section does is to recodify a definition uh, applicable to the COMPREF program that uh, was was stricken in Senate Section 8 and essentially recodified adjacent to other uh, definitions applicable to that program in Senate Section 9. The last row on page one, statewide compensatory allowance. Uh, this was identical in, in both the House and Senate. It's uh, pruning out uh, redundant and um, conflicting language. Staff recommendation is to just stay on the Senate side of the page and, and adopt the Senate language. On the top of page two, on the reverse uh, side, is the operating capital levy equalization. Uh, this is the section that provides the additional uh, operating capital uh, equalization aid necessary to op offset uh, levies attributable to additional voluntary pre-kindergarten pupils authorized elsewhere in this bill. Um, the next row, the pupil transportation adjustment. Uh, this uh, was very similar in, in concept in the House and the Senate. Uh, the House language um, uh, directed the commissioner to, to use a particular fiscal year to calculate this aid. The Senate language was, was silent on that and the staff recommendation is to adopt the Senate language. The next row is uh, a House technical provision uh, correcting a, uh, an incorrect uh, uh, cross-reference in the, in the statewide average revenue uh, report. Staff recommendation is to adopt the House uh, language here. The next row marked House Section 13, <laughs> Section 14 is the general education aid appropriation increase necessary to pay for the additional equalization aid and the other aid uh, costs attributable to the additional VPK seats authorized later. 
so similar in both the House and Senate, the House had an immediate effective date. Um, the staff recommendation is to adopt the Senate language. The one-room schoolhouse uh, was, again, similar in both bodies, except for the effective date. Uh, and as a reminder, this converts that, uh, that um, program for the Angle Inlet School from a grant to an aid, and the st staff recommendation is to adopt the, the Senate side of the page. The Wyndham School District one-time supplemental aid, supplemental aid, there was conversation about this in, in conference committee last week. Uh, there's no comparable provision in the House, and, this, and I understand the, the conference agreement is to adopt the Senate's uh, proposal here. Basic skills, revenue account transfers. Uh, this was very similar, again, in the House and Senate, except for the effective date. The Senate effective date would authorize districts to, to clear their books um, as soon as possible, and so this staff recommendation is to adopt the Senate language. And the, the final provisions are um, House provisions, so perhaps, Madam Chair, I'll turn it over to House staff at this point. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, Mr. Strom. Uh, Madam Chair, the uh, Task Force on English Language Learner in Section 16 uh, of the House Bill is the uh, provision Representative Clardy had in, in the bill. I don't know if you want details about that or if Rep. Clardy would like to spend a moment on that. Representative Clardy, would you like to speak a little bit to the bill and the amendment and then we can have discussion? Yes, thank you. Um, so this bill um, creates a, um, a model where um, where a school district, I'm sorry, the intermediate school districts would, pardon me? Yep, I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. so, so it's a, a model where the um, intermediate school districts um, are doing an um, on-site, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking, but an on-site, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Basically a, on-site training um, um, program where um, people that are working within the school are able to achieve a licensure with Mankato. Oh, it's the EL, ta EL Task Force. Okay, let's start over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just refer this one to the um, to Tim Strom. Uh, Thank Madam you. Mr. Chair, <laughs> members, the uh, the English Learner Task Force is, uh, has its duties outlined in the, in the section there. The, the membership is appointed, and the task force takes a look at uh, how English, with the substantial increase in English language uh, learner funding from last year, on how the services are being delivered, uh, what kinds of support should be uh, there outside of the language services itself, uh, and uh, how in community engagement should work. So these are essentially the issues that the task force is looking uh, at. There is the amendment in your packet, the A49 amendment, that pushes back the dates by a month each. Uh, and so perhaps, Madam Chair, you'd like to have the amendment in front of you, uh, and I'd be happy to explain uh, that amendment. Um, yes, thank you, um, folks. I'll move the A49 in front of us. Madam Chair, the A49 amendment uh, uh, just affects the dates after discussions with MDE and others, pushes back the initial appointment of the task force, and then pushes back the, uh, 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 the dates that the reports would come in. They'd still be in time for the uh, uh, 2025 budget session, but essentially they'd be delaying the report by a month uh, so that the task force would have uh, more time to finish its work. Thank you, members. Are there any questions on the A49 amendment? Representative Krisha. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Strom. Uh, Madam Chair, I, after looking at the amendment and, of course, hearing this in committee, I would support both the amendment and the task force language as agreed upon. So just want to thank Representative Clardy. I think these are good provisions. Thank you, Representative Krisha. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> so I'm glad, uh, really thankful for Representative Clardy's work on this and look forward to hearing the task force's um, uh, thoughts after they get concluded. With that, members, um, all those in favor for the A249 amendment, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The A49 amendment is adopted. Uh, Mr. Strom, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Madam Chair, members, uh, apologies, I had my amendments out of order. The, the next uh, two provisions relate to the student attendance pilot program. Uh, uh, the uh, amendment that accompanies this is the A56 amendment. And uh, uh, if you'd like to put that amendment in front of the committee, I'd, I'd be happy to walk through the changes that are included in that amendment. Yes, um, I'll move the A56 amendment before us. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I actually, represent, we're going to have Representative Senator Murrah move the amendment and then also talk about it after you speak, through, walk through it. Representative Senator Murrah, thank withdraw, you. Withdraw my motion. Representative Senator Murrah. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, this is the attendance uh, pilot program. Um, we are uh, using um, the kind of more of the model that the House had around um, a pilot program, a demonstration project with certain school districts. Um, I do believe that we have added three school districts um, from the House provision, um, and that has adjusted the amount a bit. Thank you. Mr. Strom. Madam Chair, those three districts that were added uh, are the Sauk Rapids Rice School District, which is uh, on line 1.9, the County School District on line 1.12 and the uh, Rochester School District on line 1.15. The other change in the amendment has to do with the support the department's going to provide for the, uh, 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 the pilot program. And if you look at the amendment on line 3.1, you'll see that there's an appropriation uh, totaling $330,000. Uh, the department would use that money both to administer the, the grant and to support the pilot project, uh, but it would also use the money on its statewide efforts regarding student attendance uh, data analysis and the use of student attendance data. Thank you. Um, and and Madam, Cha uh, you. Madam Chair, one other issue in the amendment that was not there before. If one of the, the uh, 12 school districts were to drop out of the uh, uh, out of the program before its completion, there is authority for the commissioner to recapture funds uh, proportionate to the amount of time that, uh, that that district is no longer participating in the pilot program. Thank you, Mr. Strom. Members, are there any questions or comments? Uh, Representative, uh, Senator Erin McClave. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I love all of the school districts here. I'm just wondering if there was, um, a, did these school districts ask to participate or do they have particularly good ideas. I'm just wondering a little bit more about that, and I do love this bill. <laughs> Representative Senator Brown. Yeah, thank you, um, Madam Chair and Senator McQuaid. So um, we looked at a few kind of different da data points for this. I think one is that we tried to have regional diversity in this, and then we also you know, looked at the attendance data across our state about what were the um, percentages of um, consistent attendance, so um, those are students that are um, missing 10, 10 days or more a year. And so from there, we tried to identify um, kind of districts with, you know, different regions that, you know, were struggling with attendance um, and that also had kind of different um, student populations. Representative uh, Senator McQuaid, a follow-up? Thank you, Representative Murrah, Senator Murrah. Are there any other questions before I go? Oh, uh, Senator Gustafson. Thank you. Um, question, of, uh, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, question just about, I don't see a lot of metro suburbs on here. Is there any plan to expand those in future pilot programs? Um, I know that we suffer from this problem just as much as anyone. Senator Gepsison, thank you for asking that question. As uh, Representative Senator Murrah said, when we looked at this, we looked at, at it regionally. So there are two suburban districts and a um, uh, urban district, and then we spread across the region, so we hit each of the other regions in rural Minnesota. We have limited funds to start this as that pilot project. My hope is between this and the task force, the data we're collecting, the data MDE is going to be analyzing, um, we'll start showing trends that we can implement as soon as next um, budget year, and then going forward with what recommendations the task force. So each year, at the end of this year, calendar year, there's the first report due about what the districts are starting to look at um, with the money. The end of the school year, coming school year, is a report as well as each of the end of each school years and then a final report. So um, as things move along, hopefully we'll be getting more data so that we can keep building on this program. Senator Gustafson, follow up. Yes, thank you. Yep, I agree with all of that. I um, understand. I just, I don't see a lot on the eastern side of the state. but. I will look forward to future debates. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any further comments or questions? Uh, Representative Senator Murrah, and then I'll go to Representative Krisha if you'd like, and then Chair 
Kunish. Good, uh, it's fine. Oh, and <laughs> Sensor Bruce. I mean, I can say it publicly if you want. <laughs> okay, uh, Chair Kunish. Well, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this. I think we've heard, we've seen it in the papers, in the media, um, in our discussions with superintendents and principals that attendance has uh, dropped into a really uh, a level of, of grave, grave, grave concern. And so when the House brought this to us, I was really, really excited about it. And they did leave space for us to add a few extra districts. And I think um, adding Sock Rapids Rice, which is a, 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 a small but mighty district, uh, kind of nestled in a unique area that's just uh, north of St. Cloud and across from Sartell, but still very agricultural, that this is going to show us um, a really unique space uh, in their, in their uh, region. We also looked at, um, on the east, you mentioned something about the east side of the, of the state. Uh, I should show you my, my self-drawn map of all these sites. Um, we looked at a, a couple of different school districts and asked for Cook County because they have a really unique population. Uh, it's a small district, but um, uh, they have Native American population, they have uh, uh, kids of color there, as well as the local um, non-BIPOC non, um, communities. But I think one of the issues that we kind of found out about them is that uh, transportation is a huge issue for them. Some of those kids end up having to be um, on buses or transported 45 minutes a day, one way. So, you know, that's an hour and a half, and consider that they're way up north, uh, that the weather is going to have a, a big uh, effect on that, how we can make sure that they have those opportunities. I mean, if a kid misses the bus, they're kind of SOL. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm really excited about this, this um, program, and I really look forward to seeing what the facts are across the state and how we can begin to assist those communities to, to address the absenteeism. So thank you for bringing this forward. This is, this is gonna be fun. Representative Kushner. Thank you, and, and thank you, uh, Senator. Um, uh, just a quick clarification. You mentioned Sock Rapids Rice as a small, Sock Rapids Rice has 1,400 kids in their high school. Mm -hmm. A small district is a district that has 800 kids K through 12. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't going to jump in. I, uh, the senator talked about the suburban schools as well. But let's make sure that we actually understand our spectrum of schools. Um, this is the fastest growing school district in this region. So. Thank you, Representative Kusha. That's why I'm thankful that the Senate brought it in. Um, and I realized, uh, Senator McQuaid's, uh, there was one question I don't think of yours that didn't quite get answered. For the provisions that, for the school districts that the House brought into this bill, we actually got confirmation from all their superintendents before we even brought it to the floor. So, um, and I know that the Senate is working hard with these other three districts to make sure everybody's on board too. Um, we also wanted to make sure that the districts had the capacity to actually take this money and hit the ground running. Besides looking at their attendance data as well as location, we worked with uh, local uh, cooperatives around the region too to say like which one of your districts do you think this would, would be the best fit for this. So um, banking out a lot of great data out of this. Um, with that, I think we've already adopted the amendment for this section, so we'll move on to, oh, oh sorry, Senator Swidinski. How could I actually miss you ever? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was late to the game. Um, thank you. Um, again, I just, I, um, I appreciate what everybody said. I'm a little, I'm a little dismayed at the lack of um, suburban school districts, but I do appreciate some of the wisdom that's been bestowed upon us in the last five or ten minutes of what, what the logic was in that. And I, too, am looking forward to, you know, that, the dad, I can't believe I'm saying that out loud, that I'm looking forward to data, but um, I, I think it's pretty obvious in my world, in my head, of why kids aren't going to school these days. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing if what I believe, um, I think they, they've started to um, wonder what the point of their schooling is. And um, I came up with this phrase um, about a couple weeks ago called pointillism, which is an art, technique 
um, but I'm going to start applying it to our kids, um, and they they starting to wonder what's the point of me going to school, and um, and we that's a huge issue for our society, not just in the state of Minnesota, but um, maybe even perhaps globally. And we'll get it right. We always do. But um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the school districts are saying, why their their absentee rates are skyrocketing. But I I hope we don't forget to ask the teachers and the the kids as well, and and not just hear from administrators that um, have poured over some data that they've collected. And um, anyways, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Senator Swidinski. And part of the language within the pilot project is just that connecting with, they have to connect with the parents and the students too to figure this all out. So you bring up some very good points about our education system needing to be uh, in the eyes of our students relevant to what they need to learn for the future. So. Thank you. And I don't want to cut this off because this is a great conversation. So I want to make sure I'm actually looking around the room and seeing if anybody else wants to add any thoughts or comments. Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to that. Oh, oh we are, did we oh, we have not adopted. Thank you. See, this is why you need more brains than just yourself. So members, we have the A56 in front of us. All those in favor of the A56 amendment, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The A56 amendment is adopted, and now we can move on to the next section. Madam Chair, uh, the next section is the appropriations section, and there's an amendment in your packet that Ms. Hofer could speak to. Ms. Hofer, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, the amendment in your packet is labeled the SCH 5237A36 amendment. Uh, and so this amendment uh, amends the provision on page R19, uh, the Minnesota Alliance with Youth Appropriation. Uh, it amends the House language to align it with the Senate language. And this is done because the Senate's appropriation for the Minnesota Alliance with Youth is in Article 2 of the bill. And the um, intent of the, uh, the committee was to put this in Article 1 at the Senate amounts and with the Senate language. Are there any questions on the 836 amendment with the appropriations? Representative Krisha. Thank you, Madam Chair. And so we're not changing the percentage amount. We're just changing where it's located in the bill. Is that correct? Um, Was the Senate three percent as well? Uh, Madam Chair and Representative Kreshaw, that is correct. So it would be the Senate's language just in place of the House's. So the department would still retain the three percent of the appropriation for that men. Representative Kreshaw. Are we still negotiating? I'd start at one percent, and then we can <laughs> settle at one and a half. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Kishan. We actually, <laughs> and with what we what was passed last That's year, fine. I know, but I just want to explain yeah. to folks so they understand. Um, for what was passed last year and the state government bill, uh, agencies are able to retain five percent for a direct appropriation and ten percent for a co competitive grant. So we've been trying to be very careful and judicious as we walk through this to see what that would look like within the process and if we needed to lower the percentage. So thank you, Representative. Kishan. I don't think I voted for that either. <laughs> Senator Murrow, would you like to move the A36? Or Representative Senator Murrow, would you like to move the A36 amendment? Yes, Madam Chair, so moved. Um, would you like to discuss it? Yeah, so um, both the House and the Senate heard the Minnesota Promise Fellows Bill. Um, this is a AmeriCorps program uh, that places mentors in the school to support um, students that are specifically struggling around academic achievement and attendance. Um, we are taking the uh, Senate amount uh, for the appropriation, but I do believe that that you know there will be hopefully in in future budget years ongoing discussion um, about funding this important program. Thank you, Representative Sensimer. Are there any further questions on the amendment? Are we going to speak to the after we adopt it? We're going to speak to the provision. Yes. Okay. Uh, Representative uh, Representative Sensimer moved the A thirty six amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Um, the 836 is adopted. Um, Representative Krisha, to the um, provision. Thank you. And I just wanted to speak in support of this as well. I, uh, I, I've seen the work that these, uh, these folks do through the AmeriCorps and just wanted to speak in favor of it. Thank you, Representative Krisha. Um, with that, members, I think we briefly skipped over uh, um, provision uh, section 18. If we want to quick go over that before we go to final comments on Article 1. Mr. Strom. Uh, Madam Chair, this is the task force uh, that accompanies the uh, student attendance and truancy efforts. 
Uh, this is on page. Uh, R16 of the, uh, the side-by-side -side language. Uh, the members of the task force are, are specified. It's, uh, it's done as a legislative study group, so it'll be under the auspices of the LCC. Uh, uh, four House and four uh, Senate members will be appointed to the task force, and uh, they're going to evaluate ways to increase student attendance and to look at the truancy issues in front of them. Uh, the, the task force is on a relatively quick timeline, as are some others, with a, uh, the hope that a final report is to, uh, 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 available to the legislature by the end of this year. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Department of Education will provide administrative support for the group. Uh, the LCC will provide the, the technical assistance for the meetings and that kind of thing. Uh, so, Madam Chair, perhaps uh, the committee members want to speak to the, the role of the task force in terms of their duties. Uh, this provision had a fair amount of conversation in the House as well as the truancy package that's before you. Thank you, Mr. Strom. And I just wanted to thank, um, this is a great example of working across the aisle. Representative Keeler and Representative Bakeberg worked together to put this task force um, together to make sure that we're having a legislative look at the attendance pilot project as well and um, having MDE be able to provide some of that data that they'll be looking at and your ability to reach out and um, ask questions of maybe some of the pilot pro program participants and other areas they want to find out national trend lines and and things that are working and not working in other states so it's going to be a robust task force and I know um, uh, Representative Keeler and Representative Fakeberg are very um, very excited for it. Uh, Representative Krisha. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to echo that as well. One of the things that's most exciting to me is not that this is in place today, but what we're going to see in the future. Um, having a couple of these folks uh, from different walks of life and perspectives and different uh, sides of the aisle, I think that we will see a robust solution um, that will really be interesting to watch as it moves through. So um, these are one of those things that you look forward in the future and go, okay, I can't wait to see what product will be. So thank you for including it. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions on this section? All right, members, I think we've adopted all the amendments for Article 1. I want to open it up for questions or thoughts on the entire article, the longer general education one. It's really quiet this morning. Give us just a second. Oh. I'll give everybody a chance to page through. I am seeing no comments. Uh, Chair, uh, Chair Kudish, did you want to Love mention that. anything about general education, <laughs> the general education article? Um, I just feel like we have um, really put together an incredible small but mighty um, omnibus here, and especially when it comes to general education. It's been um, a really great session this year, uh, listening to the bills and the issues and the um, comments that our community or that our um, members have brought to us. And um, I'm excited to get these things implemented into the schools and see what we can do to, to build on what we did last year and build on uh, for the next year and a bit of time from now on uh, um, in the next coming years. So thank you. Thank you, Chair Kunish. I don't think I could have said it any better. We did a lot with the little money that we had, um, especially in this area, and look forward to the task force's results as well as the pilot project. Um, with that, members, we'll move to adopt Article 1 as amended um, with the sections indicated on the tracking documents and with fiscal staff instructed to adjust appropriations and revisors instructed to make technical corrections if necessary. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Article 1 is adopted. All right, members. So moving forward, we will be, the Senate will have the gavel tomorrow, but we're just, we're recessing for today because we don't know if anything else will come up. Chances are we will not be coming back, but just kind of keep an eye on your email. I know each body has a, a long floor sessions ahead, so we just wanted to leave it open just in case there's some more work we can get done together. And, um, we are in recess. <laughs>